something obviously important because you have to teach your users how to do the uh, the different transfers when they're not familiar with these these phones. Okay, uh, talks about how to do the uh, the call park, and um, so it's it's different. It varies from one phone model, uh, from one phone vendor that, to the next, and even sometimes within from one phone model to the next with within a vendor. All right, that's the um, as far as the documents. I think that's those are the main ones that I wanted to to show at this point. And now we're going to uh, currently I'm logged into a uh, a QX two hundred. All right, you'll see that it is on the uh, latest release six point two point forty. So we want to look at how to, how to configure the phones. The first thing you'll do is go to your extensions. And on your extensions management page, you're going to have a list of all your different extensions. And and then you'll specify each extension, which IP line that the, uh, that the extension is going to be associated with, which, uh, which uh, line on the IP line on the system. So it's, it's on this IP line, that's where you're going to configure each individual phone. So keep in mind you've got your extensions. Your extensions get uh, you can choose edit the extension and select the IP line that it's associated with, or uh, you know if it was an analog extension, you could choose the uh, FXS extension. Or in the case of extension 160, this is a, uh, a virtual extension, which means it does not have a phone instrument assigned to it. All right, let's just do an edit on, on this extension so you can see the, uh, the actual settings. Uh, one of these extensions here doesn't uh, matter, so extension uh, 101. All right, the extension 101, you've got your, your name. This is the user's uh, password for voicemail. Uh, and then you have the attached... Uh, line, in this case IP line number two. You've got all your IP lines available on the that are available on the system. Some are disabled because I haven't, I don't have an IP license that's going to enable those additional IP lines. All right, so now that you've assigned the IP line, now you need to go and configure the actual uh, phone instrument. Okay, I can actually I can use this uh, setting down here at the bottom it's where it says go to the line settings. That would take me to IP line number two, or you can click on interfaces, and then it takes you to the uh, IP line settings. All right, I've got a, a couple phones already configured here. I've got uh, IP line number one, IP line number five, um, IP line number eight. Okay, I've got a, um, I do have a <clears throat> phone here beside me. We're going to configure uh, a couple of these phones and add a couple new ones uh, here. All right, there's um, there's three ways to, first, first thing you want to do when you're configuring your phones, let's start with that, is you go to your IP line settings. There's an option here, a couple options. One is to enable plug and play. For, for the IP phones. So plug and play is where you you have a phone in your hand and you just connect it to the system and the phone is able to recognize or, or the system is able to recognize that phone. It recognizes the phone model, the MAC address. It sends out a configuration file to the phone so that it can work properly and it just it automatically comes up and it gets assigned to the very first uh, extension that has an IP line assigned to it. Firmware version control. Okay, this is a, a nice option. This is where the QX will control the uh, the firmware version on that phone. So we will automatically upgrade or downgrade that phone to our recommended firmware. All right, we're doing that for the uh, the Snow phones, um, Yealink phones. Might be another model, but that list uh, that I pointed to earlier, it'll specify whether the phone, whether it's, it's supporting 
the automatic uh, firmware version controller note. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now they get the uh, this option. This setting is probably the more important setting. This is, and you need to configure this first before you connect your phones. This is where you're actually specifying, you're telling the QX where the phones are physically located, whether they're on the LAN uh, or WAN, or whether they're physically, uh, there's going to be, if you created a VLAN, uh, you'll see a third option here called VLAN, and they'll specify which VLAN uh, it, it, the phones will be found on. And why is that important? Because when the phones receive a configuration file from the, the QX, one of the options in the configuration file is going to be the IP address of the PBX. Okay, and it's going to specify either the LAN, WAN, or VLAN based on the setting that it has here. And then there's an option for your uh, template, which we'll look at here um, momentarily. Okay, so um, the first option on configuring the phone um, on would be using the plug and play method. Okay, I've got a uh, um, a Snome phone here, and if I disconnect it, and um, and then I reconnect it, I power it back up. Okay, it's just now coming up. I just connected it. It's getting power. When that phone goes to configure, it should once the system recognizes it, it should come up and be assigned to IP line two which will be extension 101. Okay, why that one in particular? Because it's the very first IP line that's available and also has an extension assigned to it. All right, so it will, uh, that's the one that it'll come up on. All right, I'll refresh that a time or two and um, we'll see. Hopefully it'll come up here for us. All right. While well that's uh, configuring, uh, let's. Oh, there it is already. Okay, good. So it automatically got assigned. Uh, I did not have to do that. I did not have to add the MAC address or anything else. That phone uh, automatically got assigned to IP line number one. Here's the MAC address. It's a. Uh, it's a SNOM. It's a 360. All right, one of the reasons I like to use the, uh, the Snome 360s, even though they're, they're a little bit older, but they reboot real fast. They come up real quick. All right, and um, if the phone is working for us, I do get dial tone. And I can dial star 74. Let's see, we want to... Uh, Let me go off hook. Star seven four. This phone is connected to IP line number two. Extension is one zero one. All right. So if you dial star seven four, it tells you which extension it came up as and uh, which IP line it's assigned to. All right. That's the plug and play part of it. All right. The next option would be to um, would be the auto configuration. Okay, and this is where you uh, specifically choose uh, an IP line. <clears throat> For example, uh, IP line number seven, extension one hundred six, where you go in, you select it, you enable it. And then there's a drop-down list of all your different, um, all the different phones that we support. It's a very impressive list, very long. A lot of these phones, uh, or even the older phones, we're still going to configure these. We'd, we'd never remove the older phones from our list. You know, like a lot of the old, uh, like a Polycom IP300, you know, this phone, they don't use those anymore. Um, but we'll still configure those. <clears throat> 
All right, let's choose uh, a phone I have here. This is a Yeelink um, 49. Uh, let's see, which one was it? I think it was the uh, T49G. Okay, and then so I choose the phone model. And I've already got the MAC address. So I can copy and paste it. The line appearance, this is important. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. The line appearance is, is going to specify how many simultaneous calls that that phone can make. Okay, you can um, increase it. Uh, let's say, let's say if I choose chose eight, uh, it might not allow it on that, that particular phone model. Depending on the phone model or, or phone, uh, they have limitations on how many simultaneous calls that the phone model can make. All right, so five basically means that it can make it has five line appearances. That means it can receive up to five phone calls. The username, this is a LOC for local EXT extension 106. We give it a default username. And then we're going to give it a good strong password. Okay. And then uh, the other options, just leave it as UDP. Use the default template. All right. That's all going to be fine. All right, so at this point, that phone, it, um, it should configure. Uh, now I boot that phone up and uh, power it up, and it should configure to the, uh, to the system. All right. I know that phone takes a little bit longer to, uh, to, to boot up. You'll see an option here for the password. This is a good, strong password. It's very important that you, can, you use our uh, password um, that you don't need to know what this password is. You just uh, need to know that there is a good strong password there. If you want to use a different one, you can click on this little key. All right, and then um, oh, I just lost it. Let me do that again. So if I click on the uh, the key. And it gives you a, uh, a list of passwords to, ch to choose. Okay, you can uh, just click on any one of these. And that would be the password that would be selected. You can see that these are good, strong, random, you, you know, characters, numbers, letters. All right, so you can just choose on any one of those and it would uh, select it for you. But there's already a password in there, so we're not going to uh, interfere with it. And the phone uh, will be booting up. It'll come up here momentarily. All right. Once you, uh, there, that's the second method. Third method would be to manually configure the phones. Okay. So let's say you have a uh, um, a type of phone that's not supported. It's not on our drop down list. All right, and um, it will still work with the system. You know, maybe it's a door station or a soft phone. Um, okay, it will still work with our system, but we're not going to. We don't have a configuration file for that uh, phone that we're going to use. So you can see down here, uh, down towards the bottom, you see I've got some extensions that are. Um, you just click on the IP line. And for your phone model type, you go through your list of all your different phone models, and then you know you don't see it listed. Okay, so you just select other, and the opportunity to enter the MAC address, you you uh, you can't do that anymore. That's been removed. It's all grayed out, and then you specify the line appearance. That's how many simultaneous calls. Then you add a username local extension 108 
and then you will need to know what that password is instead of letting the system just randomly choosing a, a password for you um, <clears throat> you need to know what the, what that password uh, might be okay so you, you need to um, yeah, you, obviously you can write this down but it's easier if you're careful you can highlight it right click on it and copy it okay now that you've copied it now you can choose it by selecting on it okay now that's the password that's in there and then you can save uh, your settings and now you're going to need to log into that particular uh, device so that you can manually configure the uh, you can manually configure that device okay right? so let's say um, the phone that I was using if, if it was this particular phone uh, device this is actually one of our supported phones but if it uh, let's say for instance if it was not um, which is the case periodically maybe there's a new phone that came out uh, it's not on our supported phone list yet well not not all is lost because you can still use it, it just means the system's not going to auto configure it for you okay you can go in and then um, in your account settings on the device there'll be a place where you can specify the SIP server that's going to be the there's only like four settings that you need <clears throat> and this will be for uh, the same across the board any SIP device whether this was a camera a soft phone one of the uh, phones that we don't support a, a door station you're going to enter the IP address for the, the PBX um, the PBX is uh, SIP port by default it will be 5060 you can change that and then uh, up here the registration uh, name this is the case local extension 101 if this was the um, I think we we're using local extension 102 um, this use the same for the uh, username and then here's the password that we had previously copied and we can enter there okay so at that point uh, this device would um, actually this is on my LAN if I change this it um, I don't know if I had the right username but let's see but that's all you need to do uh, to have that actually it was local extension 108 I think was what I was using let's just see if we can get it to register all right, local extension 108. Local extension 108. Operation complete and success. The phone, the device registered. If we look at status, it shows that that uh, account number one is registered. If we go back and look at the PBX. Um, we would see this device as being registered. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's registered as a local extension uh, 108. If you want to see which devices are registered, go to status, um, system status, and IP lines registration status. Okay, you can see all the different. Um, all the different devices that are currently registered okay um, and you can see the last one that we registered was with this uh, local extension 108 so it is registered okay alright you can see each one of those